Hello Kules, welcome back to Viva Barca and welcome to the home of everything Barcelona where we are going to be discussing on the latest as usual. We start with this report claiming that manager Xavi could opt to use surprise alternatives for Koundé and Arago in defence. We are going to be discussing on that as we progress. Then secondly, still talking about Xavi who have reportedly given three special instructions to Pedri Gonzalez while on international duty. Then lastly, Talking about Frankie de Jong, as it has been reported that Barcelona are currently in negotiations with the star midfielder of a pay cut, agreement is near. We are also going to be discussing on that. So guys, as we get right into it in much detail, please do ensure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Turn on the post bell notification to always stay notified whenever I post a new video. Consider liking the video and please watch it right up to the very end. The 2022-23 season was always going to be one for the history books, likely for all wrong reasons. You know, with the World Cup schedule in between the club calendar, fans were expecting injuries, fatigue and inconsistency throughout the campaign. Barcelona fans got their first taste of the same on the inaugural day of the international break as two of their central defenders went down injured. Coincidentally enough, they are arguably the club's most important pegs in defense, Jules Kounde and Araujo. The former has been ruled out for nearly three weeks, but the news is worse for the latter, who could miss up to two months of action owing to his thigh injury. In fact, there is a chance that the Uruguayan will have to undergo an operation to fix his problem. In light of the same, Javi could opt to use two makeshift central defenders to fill the duo's place, Frankie de Jong and Marcos Alonso, as reported by Spanish journalist Javi Miguel. Frankie de Jong has experienced playing as a centre-back, playing under Eric Ten Hag at Ajax sometimes, Ronald Koeman for the Netherlands and Barcelona, and most recently under Xavi during pre-season for Barca. And while there are some question marks over his defensive astuteness, the Dutchman is an excellent outlet to carry the ball to midfield, and obviously an excellent passer as well. Alonso, meanwhile, was lauded by Juan Laporta and Xavi for being a versatile defender who could play in the centre-back. However, in truth, he has no real experience in that position, bearing the few occasions for Chelsea very temporarily, mostly in between games. More so, the Spaniard often came into scrutiny by Chelsea fans over his defending or the lack thereof. While playing as a left-back, his height though, though served as a solid advantage. Thankfully, this feels like a last resort choice, for Xavi does have Eric Garcia, Andres Christensen and Gerard Piquet in his arsenal for centre-backs. Kunde and Araujo's absence for most of October is definitely worrying either way. Barcelona have trips scheduled to Inter Milan and Real Madrid and also have to host Bayern, Villarreal, Athletic Club and others. Javi Miguel has also reported that Kunde will likely return to full fitness ahead of El Clasico but Araujo will mostly definitely not. The fans you know, and the coaching staff will be hoping for a medical miracle but rushing either of them could turn out to be a long-term problem. It's really worrying, really disturbing to see how some of our key players have gone on international duty and carried injury. And knowing fully well how October will be one of the most important months for us, you know, with a packed schedule, many important matches this October, you know, the El Clasico, Bayern, Inter Milan. I mean, when we needed those players and now getting them injured is, is really, really terrible, really, really sad. So it's just to see how Xavi will cope without them, to see how Xavi will alternate his team to to play well. And now talking about the like of Frankie de Jong, Alonso, players who could still possibly be be rotated to play that role at some games. You know, of course, we know Frankie de Jong have played centre back before. During pre season we quite remember Xavi was mostly using him for, for the in the centre back role, which many fans were not happy about that decision. And many saw it as a way to push Frankie de Jong out of Barca. And that was a period where Barca were trying so hard to push Frankie de Jong out of the club, but he did not go. So he can play centre back. Of course, he have played it under Ten Hag, even Coleman in the time in the Netherlands. So I think he could also be, you know, rotated there at some point. But normally we have people like Eric Garcia, Gerard Piquet, Andres Chris. I'm sorry, he has Christensen. I think Christensen. Those are the three centre backs that we have now, and I think that's not bad either. But we know how the schedule is really packed. 
That's why Xavi could still consider going for the last resort in Frankie de Jong. Then on to the next story of discussion. Since he burst onto the scene for Barcelona, Pedri has cemented his reputation among fans and pundits alike as a generational talent. Despite spending a majority of last season injured, the Spanish international managed to maintain his unreal standards even after Xavi's arrival. Speaking of the Barca icon, he has taken to the 19, he has taken to the 19 year old during his time at the helm, where the youngster excluded from his starting lineup only once in eight games in La Liga and in the Champions League this term. Why it is clear to see how highly Xavi rates the former Las Palmas wonder kid, a new revelation reveals that the extent of his relevance to the highly acclaimed manager. As per report of by Mundo Deportivo, Javi considers Pedri as the most important player for the current Barca squad. However, the once legendary midfield has given the teenager three key tips on how to elevate his game and help the team grow. Firstly, Javi has requested the jewel in the club's crown to avoid getting injured as much as possible. Secondly, the World Cup winning uh, the World Cup winning coach has also demanded the current holder of the Golden Boy Award to add more goals to his arsenal. And last, but certainly not the least, the veteran has advised Pedri to take a step forward and become a leader in the dressing room. While the young buck is certainly taking the first box of the time for the time being, it is true that he lacks an eye for goal at the moment. Additionally, with Jody Alba, Piquet, Busquets, Roberto all in line to leave the club late next summer, Pedri may have to take some time, additionally responsibility. In fact, given the relatively young age of Barcelona squad, an early captaincy for Pedri cannot be ruled out. In fact, it goes in tandem with Xavi, viewing him as a player who can mark an error for the club. Ultimately, who better than Xavi is advised a young midfielder. Then on to the final story of discussion. In the summer of 2022, it seemed like Frankie de Jong and Barcelona's love affair was finally set to come to an end, with the Catalan club willing to sell the Dutchman and the latter demanding the latter demanding to receive his deferred wages, a move to either Manchester United or Chelsea was reported to be inevitable. However, it was claimed by a number of credible sources that the midfield menstrual dream remained to stay put at Camp Nou, which eventually proved to be his fate. Why many have suggested that Frankie Leon will leave the club next season, a new revelation has deemed such prediction false. As per report by AS, the Young and Barca are in allegation, um, negotiation, sorry, regarding reducing his salary with both parties closing in on a mutual agreement. And ultimately, the imminent confirmation of this development could well mean that the former Ajax hero will stay put at the club for years to come. Despite Barcelona getting a ton of stake for not paying the Arudivisi champion his deferred wages, it is key to note that the majority of players at the club were on unsustainable salaries under the previous leadership of Jose Maria Bartimeo. As current club president Juan Laporta attempts to correct the poor financial decisions taken by his predecessor, it meant sanctioning the sale of Frankie de Jong was a call that had to be taken. Xavi is a major benefactor of the Dutch man's decision to compromise on his wages as he admitted that he was never on board with the midfielder's sale. You know, utilizing de Jong as a number six on a couple of occasions, it is not far fetched to suggest that Xavi eyes a silky tactician as the short term successor of Sergio Busquets until they can sort out a more natural one, at least. So, guys, with that, we have come to an end of this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, bye bye.